Welcome everyone to this Ex Libris training session. This is Become an Expert with uh, the Leganto product. And today is session one of this Become an Expert in Leganto a series of training classes. And today's session, session one, is about automating library processing. And we'll, that's what we'll be covering, some of the different ways uh, you can automate your processing of reading lists and citations. My name is Kevin Lane Cummings. I'm a training services consultant with Ex Libris, which is now part of Clarivate. And also on the line is Jesse Ransom, who's a training and learning product specialist, specializing in Leganto as well. And uh, as I said, today is the first training session. There are six of these become an expert sessions. Uh, there's today's session, automating library processing. And in three weeks on February 17th will be the second session. We'll cover bulk rollover of those reading lists. And then the remaining topics in this spring series is a digitization and copyright overview for March, optimizing the instructor experience, purchasing workflows, and then some actionable analytics. You can register for those sessions uh, at the Knowledge Center page. And just if you want to just throw that link up there one more time, uh, but the in the chat, but the place to go in the Knowledge Center is in the Leganto product in the training folder within there is the webinars folder and you'll find the become an expert uh, Leganto page. And that's also where you can download a copy of these slides that we're looking at and where the recording of this session will appear. Uh, that'll probably get up to the recording will probably be there tomorrow sometime Friday. Uh, the, the slides are there now. You could even go grab them now if you wanted to, but I will be showing you all of them at this point. And that's also where you can register for all the rest of the sessions here. Uh, they're going to happen about every four weeks, but the next session on February 17th, that's actually three weeks from now. Today's session about uh, automating your library processing, I want to start with kind of a, a big picture question, which is which citations does your library really need to review before they go into a reading list for your patrons, uh, for your students, what, however you look at it. And I really want you to think about this, especially if your gut instinct is that you need to review all of them. Is that really true? Why? Why are you reviewing every single one? How often do you actually need to make changes to every different kind of citation? Maybe you've been using Leganto for a while and you're starting to realize that some tasks take more time and others are quick and maybe some of them could be automated. Or maybe you're brand new to Leganto and you're thinking about supporting you know, even more courses at your institution, but you worry that it's gonna be a big investment if you are evaluating, reviewing every single citation uh, with a human looking at it. Either way, I think this is a question your library should discuss probably on a regular basis, maybe every year or every two years. If you, uh, if do you really need to do this piece of workflow or that piece of work with citations and reading lists and why are you doing it? So with that kind of picture in mind, here is what we're gonna think about or talk about today. And I'm gonna present some ideas on ways you can speed up Leganto uh, using automation. So during this session, I'll first talk about how to use all my tasks to help you manually review reading lists and citations. Probably some of you are already using all my tasks to do that. And then we're gonna go through some of the automation options that various libraries have used in the past and that you could use to help cut down on the time of the processing work uh, that your library may do related to reading lists and citations and so forth. And then I'll also show how to configure Leganto to do some of that automated processing and so that you only have to review the ones that really need a human to look at it. And finally, we'll briefly look at some of the bulk jobs that can quickly accomplish other tasks. They're not really automated. You still have to run the bulk jobs, but by you doing bulk actions on your citations and reading lists, it can speed things up, which is really kind of the purpose of this session. All along the way, I will be making suggestions recommendations for how to do things, but these are just recommendations. There's not required. There's not a single way that everyone has to use Leganto. That's the great part of Alma and Leganto and this whole uh, system is you can very much customize it to whatever your institution needs to do. Small institution, large institution, it doesn't matter. Uh, these ideas are there for you to 
pick and choose the ones that seem to work for you. So let's begin by talking about using Alma tasks. Before I get too deep into this subject, I do want to address two things. First of all, as we go along here, if you have some questions that come up, just use the chat built into WebEx and send the message to all panelists. That way both Jesse and I can see it. Those questions uh, will get reposted or we'll actually speak them out loud and answer them as we go along. Uh, the other thing I want to address right away are some assumptions um, uh, that I'm making about your institution in how you do things here in Alma and Leganto. And the first is, I assume that you don't want to spend extra time, unnecessary time, processing reading lists and citations, and that you're watching this session because you're looking for ways to cut down on some of the processing tasks. That is an assumption. You can certainly stay here. If you if that is not true, you can certainly watch this session. But I assume that you're going into this with a little bit of an open mind on what this could do. And the second assumption that I'm making is that you do use all my tasks to process reading lists and citations. Let me explain that second point further, because if you don't use these, this is your chance to learn about uh, a good way of working inside Alma and Leganto. So when you log into Alma, there is a task list that can be displayed on your home page. Tasks are also available from the drop down menu in Alma. Alma's tasks, the, person, the, the purpose of having them this way is to tell you what to work on. So for today's session, I'm assuming that you start at either the reading lists task group you can see there's half a dozen reading list uh, tasks or the citation tasks again six or seven tasks that could be going there and it's prompting you to prompting me in this case to work on these citations when instructors submit their reading lists they go the reading lists go to the task called reading lists unassigned ready for processing at the same time any citations that are not ready, that are not already complete, will go to the task citations ready for processing. So I know that some of you may not use the ready for processing tasks to trigger your workflows. Please consider doing that because that's why they were invented and they're a very powerful tool for keeping you up to date and knowing when things are done so that you don't have to uh, kind of hunt around through Alma and Leganto to find the things you're working on. Of course, there is some overlap here between reading lists and citations because citations are part of reading lists. So, for example, if you start at the reading list, the task reading lists unassigned, ready for processing, and you open that up, you're going to see uh, when you're editing reading lists, you can filter the lists of citations to show you which ones are not already complete. So those could be a, a status of the citations. Uh, that you have the citations you need to work on on this reading list. You then work your way down through the citations in this reading list, the ones that require your attention because they're ready for processing. And then as you evaluate them, review each individual citation, you set them complete. And then if you're filtering for only showing the not complete ones, then it'll disappear from this list and you can tell what you have left to do and how many you have left to work on. On the other hand, if you start from the citations task list and start at the ready for processing of citations, then when you get the list of citations on the next screen, that's already filtered for those that are ready for processing. And again, you work through them, set them to complete, they disappear from this list and you know you're done with them and you just finish up this list and then you know all the citations have been reviewed. And I'm emphasizing these two tasks because what I want to talk about today are all the different configuration settings you can make that will allow Alma and Leganto to automatically complete some kinds of citations. Therefore, they won't appear on this list because they're done already. You can still see those citations anytime you need to. You just turn off that status filter right there that says citation status ready for processing. That's a filter. You just turn it off and it's going to show you all citations. But when you're working on it, you want to filter the ones that are ready for processing and anything that has been automatically set for complete won't show up on the list. It won't need human intervention. You just leave the ones that do need human review to be processed already here. All right. That's all I'm going to say about with tasks. But if you're not familiar with working with tasks in this way, there is a training kit that's been created 
with uh, some updated videos and each video is a few minutes long. So I recommend starting with this little kit of using Leganto. Uh, but if you feel you need more, there is a longer video on the best practices page, which walks through all of the workflows that we're talking about uh, as part of a single kind of dealing with Leganto. Uh, you'll see that the some of this font here on this page is in blue. Those are links. Now you can't click on them where you're sitting there watching the training session, but if you download this uh, slide presentation from that page where you registered for these classes, then these links work and they will take you to the knowledge center and to the training kits here. And then you can you know, jump right in and watch these videos. Okay, that's the first item on our agenda is just talking about tasks. And so now let's go into automation. How can you automate some things to be complete? So first I will show you that you can configure Leganto to automatically complete certain types of citations. And then second, you can configure a Leganto to change a citation status based on some other actions. So let's start with this first uh, sub bullet, automatically completing processes for certain citations. Okay, when you get Leganto, if you have recently come to the Leganto world, like in the last six months or so, by default, Leganto is configured to require library staff to review just three kinds of citations on a reading list. These three here, physical items, uploaded files, and citations with no inventory at your institution. So if you haven't changed the default settings, then Leganto will automatically set all the other citations to complete. As soon as an instructor adds them to a reading list, if they're not one of these three types, Leganto will set them to complete. And we've done the default that way. We developed the default for Leganto that way, just to make it easier to get up and running with Leganto, because then you just have to deal with fewer things when you're plenty busy as it is. But you can change configuration settings. And in fact, many institutions have changed these settings because Many institutions believe they need to review every single citation. So the, your settings may have changed if someone at your institution uh, wanted to review more citations instead of have them automatically complete. Also, the default settings were different before about six or eight months ago. So your institution may not have even changed the settings and yet you're still reviewing citations other than these three types. So some of the types of citations that some institutions choose to review that are different from that default configuration are these three. Some citations review all e-resources and CDI citations. Some uh, institutions review websites if they come through, if, a, if an instructor adds a website as a citation. And of course, some institutions review uploaded files. I'm going to talk about, instead of suggesting that you review these, I'm suggesting the opposite. So if you're currently reviewing these kind of citations, I'm going to show you how you can set up Leganto to do some of that work for you so that you only have to review the citations that are causing problems or are likely to cause problems. So first, I'm going to talk about electronic resources and CDI citations. There's probably two main reasons why some of you might be reviewing them today. When a instructor chooses a citation that's an e-resource or it's a CDI citation, you want to check for broken links and you want to identify concurrent user license to make sure that there's enough copies available for your, uh, for your users, for your students to, to check out. So perhaps you choose to proactively check every single e-resource citation for broken links, just in case there is a broken link. But that may be a very low return on the investment of your time. So consider these questions. How often are, do you find links broken? How frequently are students and instructors letting you know that links are broken? And how quickly can you respond to broken links? If your answers to these questions are things like links are rarely broken, and if you do find a broken link, you can respond pretty quickly and fix it, then consider changing your plan. Instead, become reactive and fix links when you hear they're broken. Now, that can be very controversial because why, why would you want to start with broken links? Especially if you recently started using Leganto and you used to use another tool for reading lists 
perhaps even letting instructors create their own reading lists on their own web pages or something. But because Leganto is seamlessly integrated into Alma, links are much less likely to be broken than they used to be. There are a few things that you need to set up to make this work. First, you need to enable broken link reporting in Leganto. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, because then you can inform instructors and students that they can mark links as broken. So if they do find a broken link, you want to make it dirt easy for them to do. And here's what that looks like in a reading list. They would see something like this uh, where there's a, a resource and then there's a there's a link right there in the corner that says mark as broken. They just click on it and it starts the process so that you find out about it right away. Then you need to monitor a task list called Sartations Marked as Broken because that's where anything that's been triggered by that uh, by a user, that's where that shows up. It's going to show up on a task list. And then the last thing you can do once you've got that all set up, you can configure Leganto to automatically complete all the other electronic citations. As soon as an instructor adds it to a, a citation to a reading list that is, comes from an e-resource, you can have it turned on uh, right away, marked as complete, and then wait for the people to come and tell you it's broken if that does actually happen. So let me show you how to do the first and fourth items on this list. We're going to enable broken link reporting first. To enable broken link reporting, you have to go to the configuration pages in Alma and then choose the Leganto menu and pick this tool right here, Leganto Features. It opens up a mapping table and scroll down that mapping table until you get to this parameter called mark as broken. And then the value you're going to set, the parameter value, it, there's several different choices. As you can see here, it's uh, selected as all, but there are other alternatives of what uh, could be have that flag that they can, that a user can do. So I'm just going to point you to the instructions down here at the bottom. That link goes to the documentation page about how to enable broken link reporting. And that's going to say the different parameter values that you could put in there. If you leave the parameter value blank, then users won't see the option to report broken links on the reading list. There's nothing there for them to, to click to. So you want to have something there so that they can report a broken link. And like I say, you could just put all the word all in there or there are several other options in the documentation. And by the way, the upcoming release of Leganto in the February release that's coming out in a couple of weeks, that has a new feature that you can turn on that allows your users to add additional information when they report a link is broken, if you want to have that uh, capability available for them. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that's turned on. Then talk to your instructors, make it part of your standard you know, instructing to the to students about using reading lists. Then when they report links as broken, you'll take care of them using the tasks. Meanwhile, now you can set electronic citations to be complete automatically as soon as the instructor turns them on, as soon as the instructor adds them to a reading list. So how to do that, that's again on the configuration pages. This time choose the Leganto menu and go down to course reserves automatic statuses. This is probably the most powerful configuration table in Leganto when you're talking about library workflows. It has dozens and dozens of parameters uh, to set up, just to configurations to do. But essentially on this table, you can customize which types of citations your library needs to review and which types of citations can automatically be set to complete. So we're gonna see this table a lot today. Going back to think about that task list, the more citations you have automatically complete based on this mapping table, the fewer tasks there are for you to do. So when we're talking about electronic citations and you want Leganto to automatically complete them, the three you're looking for are citation electronic, citation PC search, and citation resolved. For all of these, you want the parameter value to be complete. That means anytime an instructor adds a citation to a reading list and it's either an electronic resource, that's the first one, or it's a came from the CDI, or the citation is resolved through the open URL link resolver, then the citation is automatically marked as complete and it doesn't need to be reviewed by library staff. Especially because if they 
if the instructor built it this way from one of these sources, you could probably trust the link to work because it's already been working. The, the instructor would have found it in the first place. And it's okay to complete it automatically and just catch the few times that uh, that is broken by having it marked by the instructors and, st and students. Here's the instructions for uh, configuring default statuses for tie citations and reading lists. Again, take a look at that later to uh, to see all the details because I'm I'm giving a top level view of these, but there is a lot more here. The other reason some institutions think they need to review all citations for electronic resources is to check for limits on concurrent user licenses. So again, instead of just proactively checking every single citation one by one, consider using a bulk job to identify concurrent user licenses to find out which have limits, which, which uh, resources have limits on the number of licenses. So within Alma is a job called the Citation Insights job. And that job was originally designed to track usage, but you can actually use the job to identify citations that have concurrent user licenses. Before I show you the job, there's a couple of things to keep in mind when you're using it. First, you do need to already be using the concurrent user field on license records. So make sure that is happening at your institution. And if it's not, go back and add that information to the field in your collections. If that's a big job, you might want to start with some key collections at first, rather than trying to update all of the license records. Once you're doing that, instead of checking everything, check collections that you know cause problems. In other words, they're collections that have been known to cause complaints by instructors or students who say they can't access the material because too many other people are using them, whatever the, the in information is that they get about that. And finally, it can be useful to run the job regularly, especially during busy times, uh, to see which collections are causing problems. So let's see how to use this job. First, you, to run the job, you need to create a set of citations that you want to check. And then when you start setting up the job, you get to this task parameters page. Here is the parameter that you want to set. Set this high usage insight views for concurrent license, set it to zero. <laughs> what it means is it will return, the job will bring back any citation in the set for which the resource has been used at zero or more times, which is what it was originally designed for, for usage, but for which there is a concurrent license. In other words, it will show all the citations for resources that have an entry in that concurrent user field on the license record. So this is what the results might look like when it comes back from when the report is completed. There are citations in some reading. These are the citations in the reading lists and the report shows the maximum number of concurrent users that are allowed for each resource coming from those license records. And so this will show up. This will only show the citations that have a, some, some entry and entry in that concurrent users field. And so you know that it could cause a problem. So if you create a set, a set of citations in the, to, uh, in, to run this job uh, based on some citations that are in a, on a reading list somewhere, and it comes back with not enough concurrent users, you have a couple of options. You could communicate to the instructor that there's uh, not a lot of uh, licenses and that their, their students should be aware of that. Or you could even proactively put a note with the citation in the reading list so that students understand why they don't have access right now and what they can do about it and they need to come back later when there's not so many people using it. Or maybe you could purchase additional licenses for those titles so that they don't run out when folks are using it for our uh, reading lists for their course. Another thing that you can use is analytics to help you figure out which collections are causing problems. Uh, for instance, if there are citations that uh, are part of uh, collections that cannot be used in courses, or maybe you've migrated data from another uh, citation system and you, you've got links to the resources from the old system, and so you just want to kind of keep track of you know, who is using, which instructors are creating citations from that old system, you can use analytics to catch those and then go in and, and manually uh, fix them. So I don't have a really good example here, but because uh, analytics is its own course, there's lots of things we could talk about. But for those of you who are familiar with analytics in Alma, 
you just need to play around a little bit using the course reserves subject area. Because with course reserves, you're not limited to only resources that have usage. And then you have a couple of options to within that course reserve subject to build uh, an analytics report that you can maybe use the resource metadata, like, for example, filter for citations from a particular journal, because you know that it uh, often causes issues for, you know, you can't use it in courses, or it's uh, that particular journal's got links from your old storage system. Or you could filter by a particular URL string that again, from those problematic sites. And these reports, once they've been created, they can be turned into a, 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 an analytics widget that other staff in your library can add to their Alma dashboard, or you can have it emailed on a scheduled basis so that every time new courses, new reading lists, new citations are created, that maybe you know, dig into these problematic collections, you know, once a week the report can come back and you can go chase down those citations that specifically could cause problems. Uh, based on, you know, found by this analytics report uh, that you've set up in advance. Again, this is all about getting away from the strategy of checking every single citation just in case to instead having Alma let you know through a regularly scheduled analytics report, in this case, anytime an instructor has a citation for a resource so that you know could cause problems. That's what I want to talk about with e-resources. We're going to move on to websites, but I'm going to pause for just a second. Uh, Jesse, is there any questions that have come in that we should address now before we move on to a different area? No questions so far, just some comments that this has been helpful. Excellent. Thanks, folks. Then let's move on and talk about websites. Uh, again, we're looking at situations where some institutions review every single citation that an instructor adds to in this case, we're going to talk about websites. Uh, institutions are usually concerned about two things when an instructor adds a citation to a website. First of all, broken links to that website. And then second, sites that themselves are problematic. Maybe they have content that isn't allowed to be in courses or the sites frequently have copyright issues or something. So for broken links, again, some institutions just make a blanket policy to proactively check all website links to make sure they work before the citation is completed and allowed on a reading list. Another possibility is just to monitor only those links that are actually broken. I sound like a broken record because this is the same thing. As you might expect, this starts with relying on the broken link reporting. So you want to set up that broken link reporting. Your instructors and students just click a button when they find a website link that's broken. But there's also a job in Alma that can automatically detect some kinds of bad website links. This job is called the Process and Enrich Fulfillment job, and you find it on the Fulfillment menu. It's not one of the admin jobs. It's called the, it's on the Fulfillment menu. And when you're there, the only part, the only parameter you have to turn on for this purpose is validate external links. If you can see that on the little screenshot there. So, if you choose that selection, then you run this process and enrich citations job. The report that comes back will talk about, it'll find any URLs that bring back an error when it checks. So actually, Alba is going to go out to these websites and check, and it's looking for these errors. A uh, 500 error, which is the internal server error, a 404 error, which is page not found, and the 504 error, which is timeout. If any of those errors come back during the check, then the report will list that and therefore show you things that it knows are broken links. Obviously, there could be other reasons a link could be broken. It may not go to the right place, but these are blatantly obvious. If if the automated system within Alma brings, you know, returns these three, one of these three errors, then you know right away it's a broken report. Uh, so you could then uh, have that report and then go fix those citations that refer to those particular URLs. Now, if you're checking all websites, all websites that are citations, because you know that some cannot be used in courses or that some are prone to copyright breaches and things like that, you can configure Leganto so that you only have to review certain websites. So your assumption there would be uh, maybe some of the websites are fine, but you're only going to you know, have a human in the library staff review certain websites. The configuration we're talking about here is called Cited filtering. And it's called that because instructors can use the Cited tool, part of, all, part of Leganto, they can use the Cited tool to make a citation out of a web page. 
So hopefully that's familiar to you. I don't want to demonstrate that part. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how to set up this filtering system. But first, I need to mention how the filtering system works, because there's two ways you can create this filtering. You can either create a whitelist or a blacklist. And then once you do that, you add websites to the list. Here's what that means, though, in case you're not familiar. A blacklist is a list of websites that you always want human staff in the library to review. So if you set up the site at filtering to use the blacklist and then you add some websites to the blacklist, any time an instructor tries to make a citation from one of these websites, the citation will be flagged for review by library staff. What that means is instructors will make citations from any other website. If it's not on the blacklist, the citation will not require review. Instead, the citation will automatically be marked as complete. So a blacklist are the only websites that will pop up for review by your staff. On the other hand, you can set up cited filtering to use a whitelist. And in that case, only the citations for the websites that are on this list will automatically be marked complete. If an instructor creates a citation with any other website, it'll be flagged for review by library staff. You get to choose, and whichever way you do it, whitelist or blacklist, you can put the base URL, like you see here, amazon.com, youtube.com, that kind of thing, or you can add whole categories of sites, like all the sites where the URL ends in .edu or .gov. Either one works, and whether it's a blacklist or whitelist, the process is the same, but you do have to choose to go one way or the other. And so I'll show you briefly how to do that. To enable cited filtering, it's again on that uh, Leganto configuration page called course reserves automatic statuses and on this mapping table you're looking for this parameter cite it filter and in the parameter value you either put blacklist or whitelist if the value is blank then all citations that instructors create for websites will need to be reviewed to complete them manually but once you configure this with either the word whitelist or blacklist, then you have to define the list of websites, regardless of blacklist or whitelist. From the Leganto configuration menu, you're going to go to a different place. You're going to go to Cite It Filtering. This mapping table is where you add the websites. And you can see we've got a couple of them here. It's the same mapping table, whether you use the white, as a whitelist or a blacklist, which is defined on that different parameter. You just uh, click add a row and enter the URL and the description, and that's how it um, makes the list, the white list or the black list. So that's some way that you can speed up processing of websites that instructors use. Let's move on now to uploaded files. Last group of citations that some institutions choose to review, every single citation, is when the instructor uploads a file, makes a citation from a file they've uploaded. Again, you can be proactive and check every single citation that's uploaded just in case there's a problem, or you can work smarter, let's say, and check only citations where the instructor requests you to check it. So let me show you how to do this. First thing you're gonna do is configure the file upload copyright options, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. And after that, <clears throat> excuse me, after that, when an instructor uploads a file as a citation, they will see the copyright options that you set up. And here's what that looks like. So uh, if I was an instructor and I was starting to upload a file, up, this would come up. And there are several options there. And one of the one that's got a little blue radio button checked says use of this resource complies with our institution's fair use policy. And the other one says, I would like the library to review this resource for copyright compliance. You can put several different choices here. That's what the file upload copyright options are, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then the, you'll see the instructor can attest that either the resource complies with the policies or how, whatever you want them to attest to, or the instructor can ask you to review. And as always, uh, the citations that the instructor does flag for review they pop up on your task lists. And meanwhile, you can, anytime that the instructors pick, they say that it's fine, that the copyright is fine or whatever fair use policy, whatever it is, in other words, the, the instructor is taking responsibility for it, then you let Alma 
automatically set those uh, uploaded file citations to complete. Okay, so what are some of the options? This, again, this is how it's gonna look for the instructor. Uh, the way you set up the different options here for the instructor to pick from is on the Leganto configuration page, but specifically a tool called file upload copyright options, which is again, it's a mapping table found on the Leganto configuration menu. And then this mapping table works differently than the others we've seen today. So take a look at these instructions. Don't assume that it's, it's kind of all the same. Read the instructions about configuring this uh, to make sure that it's set up the way you want it to be done. Okay, after you set that up so that the, uh, the instructor sees some options for you choosing what kind of file it is and, and attesting to and the fair use and copyright and things like that, then you need to configure how Leganto behaves with citations from those uploaded files when the instructor says the citation doesn't need to be reviewed. And the configuration setting, again, back to that course reserves automatic statuses mapping table. And this time you're looking for the parameter called citation uploaded file, and you just set Leganto to automatically mark them complete. Again, this will only work when, uh, or it only happened this way, when the instructor says that you know they, they attest to it and it doesn't need your review. Uh, otherwise it won't be set to complete and it'll appear on your task list. All right, if we go back to our agenda, our top level agenda, uh, you can see we're ready to move on to uh, the second way of automating some tasks some work for you. I do want to pause briefly uh, just in case uh, Jesse has seen anything come in that we need to talk about. I haven't seen any questions, although while you were talking, I um, was thinking that often when we explain the difference between the whitelist and the blacklist for the site it filtering, uh, we often get asked if it's possible to have both, um, to have some websites that are treated as whitelist and others that are treated as blacklist. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know in case you were wondering, the answer to that is no. Um, I get asked that quite frequently. Thank you, yes. And it's 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 kind of inherent in the design. You can't possibly have both. It's it's not like we can't we just can't get around to figuring out how to do that in our in software. No, it's by definition. <laughs> You either say everything is approved unless it's on the list, or you say everything's not approved unless it's not on the list. There, would, there wouldn't be a way to do both. But that's a, it's it's what we wish we could. <laughs> Certainly, it would be uh, very helpful. I think. Okay, thanks, Jesse. Let's look at how you can change the citation status based on some other actions that are happening out there. Um, I'll warn you right now. This workflow is probably about as extreme as we're going to get. This is. Uh, basically saying we're going to we're going to we're not going to review anything we're going to have everything automatically be approved on a reading list all citations completed on a reading list except for very few circumstances and so i'll show you what what there that's how you want to do that but here's how they could do that and you're going to check them based on tags set on the citation so when an instructor creates uh, a uh, citations on a reading list, they can add tags. And one of those things you could monitor for is anytime the instructor marks a, a citation as essential, or maybe you have it as a, a required, maybe that's one of the tags you're using in, in your reading lists. So if the instructor says it's an essential or required, then you want to review it. Anything else, anything that the instructor says is, I guess you'd say, less important. Uh, you can configure that Leganto will automatically complete those. So it's based on the tags that the instructor selects for each citation. Or you could set up an automatic tag, uh, or excuse me, a custom tag, like this one, library inform, or you maybe call it library review. And the instructor is responsible for checking all the citations. They do everything themselves. And anytime they run into a citation a resource that they do want you to check then you tell them select this custom tag you know library review library inform and then it'll appear uh, you can have it appear on your task list and you check it that is putting the burden of checking everything on the instructor but depending on your institution that might be the way to go 
if you've got in instructors that know what they're doing with these reading lists and you're comfortable with just having them let you know when to review something, otherwise it's fine, approve it automatically, you know, complete it automatically, um, that could work for you. Like I say, it's a pretty extreme version, but for some institutions that have very limited staff resources at the library, that can be a way to go. As before, the configurations for these kind of options are on the course reserve automatic statuses table. And the one you're looking for is called uh, revert citation status by adding tags and revert completed citation status to. Another configuration you can do is to change the citation status for some other reasons. And I'm not going to go to much detail here because I want to focus on streamlining your workflows and turning on the automations and things like that that speed things up. These are automations, but they're not really part of speeding things up. Nonetheless, it's helpful to kind of for a complete picture of Leganto configurations to know that you could have Leganto change the status of a citation, for instance, when copyright is approved. You could have Leganto change the status anytime a file is removed from a citation or when a citation is detached from a repository or when a tag is removed from a citation, you could have it flagged. Leganto can automatically change the status of a citation when a purchase request or a resource sharing request is created on that resource. And finally, Leganto can change reading list status back to ready for processing if the instructor adds an additional citation. So in other words, if an instructor adds a citation, that whole reading list could come back you know, be removed from public view, maybe, and visible to your staff to quick check uh, that new citation that just came through. All of these configurations are on the course reserves automatic status mapping table, and they're certainly part of how you may want to configure your workflows. Uh, go to the documentation about it to read more about how exactly to do this, but I just want to kind of keep this in the back of your mind uh, when you're planning your whole workflow process. After all this set up with making citations automatically complete for certain circumstances, uh, I would be I would be not doing you a service if I don't remind you to do one more thing, which is to configure your reading lists to become complete automatically when all the citations are complete. Whatever process happened, whether you had to manually go in there and complete those citations or there are automatic settings that you turned on to make sure it happens quickly, once they're all completed, you probably want the reading list to also be complete and published and so forth. So the parameter for this is also found on that Leganto configuration menu. It's also in the course reserve automatic status mapping table. And the one you're looking for is reading list citations complete. And the value you want to put in there is complete. And that will just trigger that as soon as all the citations are complete. All right. That is all the automation options that I wanted to talk about today. I'm sure there are more. And if you have some automation options that you have worked with that we didn't talk about, please put that in the chat. And uh, Jesse, just unmute yourself and jump in and let us know so we all can hear about it. Meanwhile, I'm just going to proceed to the last item on our agenda. It's a short bit on using bulk jobs to automate it or to accomplish some tasks quickly. Uh, like I said, it isn't really automation per se. Um, but there are some, it, it spe can speed up your, your workflow, certainly. So one of them is, uh, basically, these are things you can do uh, on a whole group of citations or a group of reading lists or a group of courses. These are jobs. Most of them are in the admin menu on the run a job tool. I'm sure you're familiar with that tool if you've been using the admin tools. And there are several bulk jobs that can be run on these kind of uh, resources. So they are the citation insights job, the course bulk update job, the reading list bulk update job, and the reading list citation update task. Again, I don't want to take a lot of time to go into all the details for this. There is a video that explains how some of these jobs work. And if you download this slide presentation, uh, just click on the link there and it'll take you to the video. But I do want to show you very briefly what each of these jobs do. Again, in case it would be helpful for you. The first one is the course up bulk update job. This one allows you to perform several actions on a set of courses. So first you have to create a set of courses, uh, build a set, 
And then you can update the, the course information in there using some of the settings here, such as processing department, active academic department, instructors. Uh, you can delete courses that don't have an attached reading list. Um, and several of them up to the start date, end date that you can see here. Instructions again are there at that blue link for how to use this uh, job. The bulk list, excuse me, the reading list bulk update job uh, can change various parameters of reading lists, uh, including deleting a list, purging those lists, changing the status of all the lists, selecting the visibility status, selecting a new Creative Common license for those reading lists, and several other options here. Again, documentation at the link. The third job is the reading list citation update task, which allows you to update parameters on all the citations within a set of reading lists. So again, you create a set in Alma that has the reading lists, and then you run this task on those reading lists, and it will update all the citations, maybe even deleting all the citations maybe setting the citation status for every single one of them, setting a due date, removing and adding tags, removing alerts, and much more. Again, a bulk job to do a whole bunch of work really fast. Finally, there's the citation insights job. We actually talked about this earlier today. I showed you how to use this job to find out about concurrent licenses, but the job was actually originally developed to look at usage of citations. And so you could create a set of citations and then run this job and you can see different things here, like how many loans there have been, how many views there have been for the different citations in the set that you've created. Again, checking the usage might be a good way to find out if you're uh, getting much usage of a particular set of citations or courses. There's another tool that can be used on citations in bulk, but it's not on the Alma admin jobs menu. Instead, it's a fulfillment menu, and it's in the section called advanced tools for reading lists, and it's the tool is called process and enrich citations. We've actually seen this before today. We used it as a way to check citations for broken links, but it can do more. Uh, most importantly, it can match citations in a reading list to inventory in your institution in case they are not linked for whatever reason. So that's especially useful when you have turned off the automated system that does that checking. Um, there are reasons that some institutions do that, but then this gives you a chance to go back and reconnect those so that the links work instantly. That's what I wanted to talk about for the jobs in uh, bulk jobs that can help you process quickly. Next month, uh, it, again, if you have more questions, uh, that's what we're going to cover today. And so if we didn't cover what you wanted to uh, hear about, please jump into the chat and send a message to all panelists so that we can answer the question. Uh, I'm just going to finish up here with talking about uh, next month, uh, February 17th, I believe it is, we're talking about bulk rollover. So these are some of the options that you have for reusing a reading list and from term between terms and also most of the session will be the actual process going through the steps of the rolling over the process of all of your reading lists um, live in Alma and Leganto so you can see in the steps that works and again that's in three weeks on Thursday February 17th if you haven't already registered for that session you can do so at the same place where you registered for today's session so Jesse if you could one more time throw in the link to that Knowledge Center page where this registration for the next sessions are. Um, that would be excellent, thank you. And uh, again, this today's presentation, the recording of it will show up on that page probably sometime tomorrow. These slides will show up, they're there now actually. You can download the slides now and check out the links to all the documentation and videos and so forth. Uh, but for me, thank you for coming here and for attending our session. I hope you found it useful and that you'll join us next month. When you close this WebEx meeting, you'll be taken to a quick survey. Please take a moment to let us know how that went for you and how we can make it better because we offer this session several times each year and I wanna make sure next time it's even better for the folks who attend then and you would know best about how this went for you. So thank you for that. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. Jesse, I hope you can as well and we can uh, deal with any questions that come in just in the chat. But uh, for the rest of you, have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.